Hey everyone, welcome back and in this video, let's just go ahead and see how you can set up a highly scalable, highly effective blog for your own website. It could be a company, it could be a startup, if you are using Next.js and if you like working with WordPress. This is the same setup which we use at CodeDamp and it works really well, it scales extremely well and it's extremely nice for people to write articles and get started with that. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. I'm gonna quickly walk you through what our current setup looks like. So you can take a look in terms of the developer news or the blog section which we have. Let's go to the first blog which we have. These are the teams who won Code Dams Hack Fest. You can see there are three authors for this blog post. All three are the team members, currently team members of Code Dam. And you see it's just a regular Regular blog post right nothing fancy about it but the fact that this blog is written in WordPress and it's highly customizable and reflects all the changes almost instantaneously is great so if I go ahead and if I let's say go to this blog post over here and if I say that okay I want to make the code dams C a little you know small I can update this and the moment I do this, the post gets updated and it's automatically reflected on the main website. And mind you that this is a Next.js build. This is a static build. So if you take a look under the hood, inside networks tab, if you go to the doc, refresh, you're gonna see we pretty much load very fast. It's just 31 milliseconds for loading this content. And because there is no JavaScript or nothing as such required for this page to be functional, this page would pretty much just work right off the bat. The moment HTML is downloaded, this page can be used by the user. They can start reading it. Okay, so how did we set this up? How does this whole setup work? I'll walk you through a few important parts. The first thing, the first and the most important thing is you have to host your WordPress instance, obviously somewhere. For us, we are hosting it at wp.codedown.com. This is our own internal place for hosting our CMS, for hosting WordPress, which allows us to write content and we only use posts for now. These pages and the whole, the main website itself is, is pretty useless at this point because we don't use this domain anywhere except for writing content. But these posts, things which you see on CodeDamp's main website as well. Next, we you can see that we have a very important plugin called WP GraphQL. If we go to plugins and install plugins, I'll just walk you through a few important plugins. The single most important plugin which we have currently is this WP GraphQL, let's see, this one, right? This plugin allows us to have a GraphQL API exposed over WordPress. Now again, this is just a choice because we also use GraphQL as our backend. So it seems like a nice way to also pull data from WordPress. And you can see that here is a demo query, which I have written. If I play this query, we can pretty much get a lot of data from the GraphQL endpoint. And of course, this, this GraphQL endpoint is secured. This is not publicly available, but yeah, you can pretty much use these queries in Next.js for extracting out data. Once you have the setup, once you have the GraphQL query or GraphQL extension set up, all you have to do inside your Next.js build is you have to create a slash news then slash slug thing. We are having an additional product thing, but for most people, they don't need it. You can just do something like this, codedown.com slash blog slash something. And what you have to do is extract out this slug, Hackfest winners, let's say, and perform a GraphQL query which uses this ID as a slug. And if you play this, this WordPress instance will return you the data and you just have to inject that data into the page. Now, all of this, all of this UI, of course, that is constructed with HTML and CSS. So you can take a look at that. I mean, whatever you want to customize, but the core functionality is provided by this GraphQL plugin. Another important plugin, which we use at this moment is this plugin called Co-Authors Plus. This Co-Authors Plus allows us to inject WordPress and modify WordPress itself to have multiple authors of a single blog post because a lot of times our whole team is working on a single article, not just one person. So this Co-Authors plugins allows us to inject that functionality and also, you know, just extract out that Co-Authors through GraphQL plugin. Another important plugin which we have currently is WP Offload Media Lite. Now this plugin over here this is important because we don't want to store our content, our images, our media on this 
WordPress instance. Why? Because this WordPress instance is very fragile in a way. It's a small server in AWS. It's a T3 server. It's not powerful. It cannot handle a lot of load. It has a limited file system. So what we do is that we use S3 buckets for all the media. For example, the image which you see over here, you can see that this is hosted on codedamblog.s3 amazon aws.com and that is awesome that is perfect why because this allows us to host or you know even migrate the wordpress installation pretty quickly to some other host in case this crashes or something happens and none of our media would be lost none of our text or articles would be lost because we also back up these articles on s3 finally to make this magic happen where you edit a post let's say where you edit, let's say if I remove code dams, code dam hack fest, if I update this and if I give it a refresh or maybe, you know, just wait for the post to update, there we go. Now give it a refresh. You can see that it immediately updates. The way this happens is through a plugin known as WP Webhooks. This WP Webhooks, what this does is that it allows us to configure a webhook on post updated, right? We have a webhook on post updated which gets called on the main website. And thanks to Next.js on-demand revalidation, which allows you to revalidate a single path, invalidate a single path, and then, you know, revalidate it again. We can build static pages, static blog pages forever, but also refresh them immediately within milliseconds if they are updated. So we get best of both worlds. This page is static, Therefore, this gets served from CDN within less than 40 milliseconds. In an ideal case, you can see 29 milliseconds, that's it. But this also gives us the benefit of dynamic things because if I update this page, it will immediately reflect it here thanks to this invalidation thing which we have in place through this webhook configured with another plugin. And yep, it, does, it just works, right? You don't have to do anything else. It just works. Now, this architecture is amazing, obviously. Why? Because you can host this T3 instance for a few dollars, right? But you can put Next.js in front of this WordPress installation for extremely high loads or, you know, just extreme traffic because these pages are delivered as static pages from CDN, from Versal's Edge or from anywhere where if you're deploying it on AWS or Netlify, they would be delivered like that. But at the same time, your dynamic things, your content creation, your authors can work on a low power device, your 10, 15, 20, 30 authors who are just creating content over here. This would not bug your WordPress installation a lot, except for extracting out data, which will only happen at most once every blog post. And that's awesome, right? So this solution is highly scalable because it's static as well as it's dynamic at the same time. And it allows you to pretty much just set up your WordPress installation without a huge server setup or a huge server configuration and just forget about it. So yeah, that's how we use this setup for running a code damn blog currently. Let me know what you think about this setup. If you have any additional things to add on to the setup, if you want to see any additional benefits, that is all for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.